Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. Former Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz is exploring an independent run for the presidency in 2020, and he joins us now to talk about it. Howard, uh, welcome. You are a former businessman. We obviously love talking business here. And so I have to start on the economy. We've mentioned it earlier. Ray Dalio wrote a piece today talking about how the percentage of children who grow up today to earn more than their parents has fallen from 90% in 1970 to 50% today. This, while the stock market is a, a stone's throw from hitting an all-time high, unemployment is at record lows. Help us understand what does the economy actually look like? Because this call for socialism, which you don't support, isn't coming out of nowhere. Well, I, I think it's a very interesting question because the economy is somewhat bifurcated. First off, you have a president uh, who for two years has used the stock market as a proxy for the economy. Uh, we all know that's not true, not accurate, not fair. And at the same time, he's trying to control the Fed, uh, something that uh, no American should stand for. But the real issue in the economy that no one seems to be talking about, that I've been talking about for two years now, is $22 trillion in national debt and $500 billion in interest expense. And what I would, I would ask a rhetorical question for all the Democrats that are running for president who have been in national office, who, are, who have one idea after another every single day, where have they been on this terrible, tragic issue that's facing every American? And in terms of children and grandchildren, this national debt is, on, is immoral because it's on, going to be on the backs of them for the future of America. This is a national security issue. But so, can I just tell you yeah. what they are? One of the issues is the deficit, though it should be, doesn't end up being a core issue for voters. If you said to voters yeah. the deficit is a gazillion or a bajillion, yeah. it doesn't hit with them. And so those Democrats, while you may be right fundamentally, yeah. you have to win literally, and it's not a core issue for them. Well, it, it, it will be a core issue when the stock market, all of a sudden one day we wake up and the stock market is linked to the fact that the national debt, the, the country cannot continue to print money. We are gonna run out of money, we're gonna run out of resources and it is a national security issue. It will be, a, a, will be an issue. And in terms of the, of the socialism in which the Democrats are now espousing issues that are so foreign from our democratic process and free enterprise system. If Bernie Sanders, who, who says publicly, I am a socialist, if he gets the nomination for the president of the United States, Donald Trump is going to get reelected. And for some reason, if Bernie Sanders is going to be the next president of the United States, that would be a disaster for our country so and a disaster for the economy. We, we, you've got a good audience with us talking about debts and deficits. Let's yeah. go back to 1969 and take a look at debts and deficits around this country. Uh, the only time we have had surpluses uh, have been under uh, Bill Clinton yeah. and, and one, one quarter under President uh, George W. Bush. There are a lot of people who will be frustrated by the idea that what you are saying, while sensible, is a, a Republican talking point that justifies cutting social programs, which we've witnessed in the last few years. Yeah. So what happens is Republicans run up deficits as a result of tax cuts quite often, yeah. and then say, oh, well, we can't afford our social programs because look how serious our debt is. Yeah. And so the only people who get messed up out of this are people on government assistance, people who are you know, on food stamps yeah. and things like that. So, so let, let me qualify that, because I think this is important. Uh, during President Obama's eight years, mm -hmm. Republicans, McConnell, Boehner, and Ryan banged on President Obama for eight Eight consecutive years on the debt and the deficit. Trump comes in, where are the Republicans? For two years mm -hmm. now, we don't hear a voice. But I don't agree with what you're just saying for one, one reason. I strongly believe that the wealthy should be paying more in taxes and getting less. Corporate America, you just had Congressman Delaney on, mm -hmm. he was correct. The corporate tax rate should not be 21%, it should be 25, 26. Mm -hmm. And use that money to benefit those who have less. But we must have a transformation of our tax policy and the wealthy in this country and corporations should be paying more. And use that money responsibly to help help people who are, pay, who, are, who are not getting what they need from the American society. But let me just say one thing that's so critically important. I said earlier we have a bifurcated uh, economy. We have 42% of Americans today, their families, don't have $400 mm -hmm. in case of an emergency. You've got 5 million kids in America, ages 18 to 24, who are not in school and not in work. But, but let me so, interrupt. I don't mean to interrupt you. That's all right. But, Go but ahead. You said that. Ray Dalio said something about Jamie this the other Diamond. day. Jamie yeah. Diamond said it. And you know what? A lot of Americans 
knew this a long time before you really rich guys started talking about how bifurcated America is. And that's where we are today. So do you get why some people don't really think that you've yeah. got all the answers, that you rich guys who are, I don't know well, who told you that America's bifurcated. Yeah, I, Somebody I came know. to you and told you that there's a problem because well, I, I the rest of America has been living it. I you a rich guy, but I grew up in federal, I, I grew I up in the private sector. I understand, but now you're a really, really rich guy. Yeah, but I'm, I'm self-made and I built a company that employed over three million people in the last 40 years and gave health care ownership and free college tuition to every employee. But you get when, yeah, when, when, when get you it. rich guys have, can get into the bifurcation yeah, conversation that I'm the rest not, of us have been having for decades. Yeah, but this is about a lack of leadership in a government of two sides, Democrats and Republicans, who are unwilling to face the issues and solve America's problem. Why do we have a 20, $22 trillion debt? Why do we have a health care crisis? Why do we have K-12 through that's not working? Why is our standing in the world not working? Because of both parties' ideology and unwilling to work together. That's why I'm considering running for president. So why, why is everybody to break the if system? If that's true, why is Britain bifurcated? Why is France bifurcated? Why is Germany bifurcated? Why were the Arab countries bifurcated? It's not actually about Democrats and Republicans. It's about rich people who don't pay taxes, who don't understand that it's not about charity. It's actually about wealth distribution. Right? Why, if that's wait, your explanation, why is wait, Britain bifurcated? I, I, wait, are we, now we're going to talk about what's going no, on. No, but you're telling me that I'm our bifurcation, about, economic bifurcation in America is because of Democrats and Republicans not agreeing on policies? I, why is Britain bifurcated? I'm talking about the lack of leadership and understanding of the fiscal responsibility of elected officials to do the right thing for the American so people. So in each, okay, how can you just, just, in how each case you that I just outlined... But, but that's because yeah. that's not the answer in all those countries, and yet the world is well, bifurcated. I'm not, I'm not here talking about all these countries. But you're saying I'm that the reason we're America. economically bifurcated is because of Republican and Democrat policies, and I'm telling you it's a global issue of wealth concentration, not actually about political disagreement on policies. Do you, you want to talk about each country? You want to put China up here? No, but you I think we can cut this any you know, way you want, right? The, the, uh, how many rich wrong. people in America wrong. Could have the wealth of the bottom half of society? How many rich people in the world have the same wealth as the bottom three and a half billion in society? Oxfam says it's under 10. Listen, what, about 28? I didn't create the policies that. that we are now under. I'm here to tell you that I am looking at the current situation economically in this country, and if you want to solve the problems, you have to have the kind of leadership that cooperates with one another and is not steeped in ideology. Okay, then, I'm Howard, sure you but can here's agree the issue. But then yeah, I guess I don't, I don't understand but, how but, that... Hey, but, you know you can that works? Do, but, but you can go from ideology. I, I, I'm really clear on how economic bifurcation works. Yeah. I'm concerned Not bifurcation, that, so, solving the problem. Right, but, the, the, but so, so Republicans and Democrats are not agreeing is why no. Germany is bifurcated? Can I ask you one simple question? Yeah. Should we be spending less than we're taking in? It all it's a yes or no. It, no, no. no it's, it's, it's not a yes or no. It's absolutely it not a yes, yes or no. no question. No, it's really not. If you're in a recession and you are, you need to stimulate the economy and you have got a return we're on it. Hold a, on. Let me just let, you ask me a question. We're not in a recession. Right. But but the answer in that case might be yes. Yeah. So it's not a yes or no question. So suggesting that well, how about right now that you're taking how, no, in. How about right now? In this moment in time when you just put up these numbers about the economy going so well, should we be spending less than we're taking in? We have to understand what we're spending. We have you don't want to answer the question. No, I'm actually answering it in a nuanced way that doesn't suggest that there's a simple answer to 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 these complicated questions that that plague no. the world okay in all I'm, fairness it's not complicated to me I understand when we that. have such a robust economy and we're spending much more than we're taking in and why because the Democrats and Republicans and this president are not doing what they need to do right. that is to reduce this national debt that right. we have let's say you have the best ideas to do so we yeah. have to talk about a path and process for a moment yeah because you talk about Mitch McConnell and while he might not be inspirational he might not be somebody I want to have over for dinner. Yeah. He's a tactical beast. Yes. And let's say you end up in Washington. Yeah. You can end up in President Obama's position where Mitch McConnell said, thanks for playing. I'm about to block you on everything. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the expertise or the experience. How do you take these ideas right. and take this whole tent? By the way, if you ran against John Delaney, your ideas are somewhat similar. You might knock that guy out. How? Where is your okay. path? To okay. win and to govern, there's yes. a process okay. and you're outside of it. Am I going to be allowed to answer this question without being interrupted? Okay, thank you. So here it is. First, let's talk about the theory of the case, okay? First and foremost. In the last 30 plus years, only 8 to 10 battleground states have decided the presidential election. If I enter the race, over 40 states for the first time in 30 plus years will have an opportunity in which your Republican or Democratic vote in a red or blue state will really matter. That changes everything. So there is a path to 270, and it's real. 
And it's real because not only of the math, but because the country is so divided, fed up, exhausted, and disgusted by our political system. And that's a fact. You put up a, a stat before that 50% of Americans don't trust Facebook. 71% of the Americans don't trust our government. We need a change. That's the first stop. Second thing is, now, for the first time since George Washington, if an independent person, if I run, and I'm fortunate enough to get to the White House, can you imagine the historic mandate for the first time in over 200 plus years? We don't want a Democrat, we want a Republican, we want an independent with common sense solutions and leadership skills who has built a global enterprise in 77 countries, understands the world, Russia, China, Syria, the Middle East, this whole aspect and has proven you can build a company and reward your people at the same time. So what do I believe? The American people are going to say to all the Republicans and all the Democrats, if you don't work with this independent person who's running for president, we're going to fire you. So you're running for president? Re yes or no answer. answer. I'm not question. Here. Oh, that's the question. Yes or no answer. I'm not here to say that today, but I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm on a bus tour next week in Kansas. I've been traveling the country for the last almost 11 weeks, a different city in every day. And I'm, I'm inspired by the American people. And this, this system is broken. We can fix it, but we can't fix it with the ideology of both parties. I'm not here to talk about the UK and France. I'll do that another time. But I, I love America, and we can fix these problems. All right, Howard, thank you for being with us. Good luck. We look forward to hearing about when you declare that you're running for president. What a spirited conversation. That's, that's, what, that's what it's about. We're a respectful, you. spirited conversation. That is what the United States is about. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.